ended up resigning because at that point... And there it is. I used a one-inch solid piece of steel that I just figured out that I had after trying to figure out if I could put a socket on that. But um, it's out. Time for the new one. Nope. I'm busy right now. I'm doing some plumbing. I'm doing some plumbing right now. There. It's all fixed. Well. I bought this hydraulic press made in Japan. I bought this hydraulic press when I had the POS plow truck five, six, seven years ago. Because so I bought this Suburban Sierra Classic. Oop, get that lanyard out of the range of the lens. Bought this in 2007. So I bought this in 2006 or 2005. And I have never used it in six years. So I'm hammering on these ball joints, I'm beating the heck out of these sockets and the things fall over and parts are flying. I said, I got a hydraulic press, that's the way to do this. So I found my plates that have the holes so you can drive things through, which is right over here. Yep. Had this thing for so long and never used it. So I put the ball joint in, I used a drift pin. I ran down the ram with the hydraulic jack at the top and the ball joint eased right in. The only thing is I tried to use the socket to hit the ridge of the ball joint but it wouldn't work. I don't know why. So I put the drift right on top of the ball joint stud. I'm sure that's real good. <laughs> Got to make sure underneath that your ball joint goes through the holes that are cut into those press plates. I don't know as you'd be compressing stuff. So, yeah, I made sure of that. Gotta go real slow and think about what you're doing. <laughs> so, it's in. I cranked her down and then I tapped it a bit with the hammer to help it slide through. I've been doing this for a while, but... I may have had the use of somebody else's press, but I don't have a lot of experience. And you crank her down and it just slides on through. What I didn't tell you was I already installed the top ball joint. Then I realized, wait a second, got to install the bottom one through the hole of the top one. So I whacked that thing out, landed on the ground. Anyhow, you just unscrew the vice grip over here and zoop, springs take it up. A little faster. Zoop, ding. Nice to have a hydraulic press on the site. Take out your drift, your push pin, put it back into the bucket, parts. And one thing I should have done is de-fluid film this earlier. I have one hour 35 minutes. As I mentioned earlier on a previous video that I'll stitch together on Windows Movie Maker. I had all kinds of videos that were hanging around Erp. too well. All kinds of videos from October, November, my trip partway through uh, Phoenix to uh, Texas. Whoop. Ding! So I put them on one spot on my hard drive, labeled it, and I deleted a zillion videos that I've all forgotten about. Because today is the day of the present. Now, I mentioned earlier that I had a source of heat, and here it is. Probably 15 years ago, I bought this waste oil furnace. It's a Gidder, made by Mr. Gidder in Lee's Summit, Missouri. And I've used it a few times, but it needs to be babysat because it just got a little hot a minute ago when this top cap goes smoke starts coming out because it'll overwhelm the chimney. So I just turned down the rippage of the oil by a half a turn. This is a real primitive machine. No, it 
compressed air, you just drop in some oil, some lit paper towels or rags or newspaper, and you fire it up, but you got to babysit it. temperature on the smokestack goes above 350, 375 Fahrenheit, which is 175 Celsius, she misbehaves. And that's not a good thing. It's a solenoid to turn it off, but over here at it. Anyway, gotta do some work and do a better installation of this thing. I got my oil bucket sitting right on top and it's not a good place for a plastic bucket. I'm going to put this oil bucket over there to shield it because things are too close. I just wanted to see if it worked. I got my switch over here. This is a lead fitting but still a plastic bucket will melt at the same time as the lead and close off the flow of oil. So that's my source of heat and I've got a sweater on. Yeah, it's me. Need a shave. I've got a sweater on and I'm friggin' dying. I got extra thick socks, I got long johns on, and there's no insulation whatsoever in the ceiling. All the heat is going directly upstairs. But it's still toasty warm in here. Yep, this is wide open. Yeah, it could be, should be enclosed, but it ain't. fuel tank I brought back from Palm Springs. Remember that? The Acura? Gone. Aluminum bender. Bumpers. Corvair tin. Diesel dash. Leaf springs. Fuel tanks. Bumpers. Aluminum wheels. I bought in. Where'd I buy those? Orange County. Palm Springs fan belt toss that was held in Orange County. 203 shifter. Who knows if I'll ever get to that. R12, R134A, fuel injection pump. Tires for the Corvair. Pitch sprint right there. 18580 R13s. Can't get them anymore. Don't exist. I haven't got them. Right there. Late model. So it's toasty warm up here. All the heat's escaping. I guess it doesn't really matter when it's waste oil. Oops, careful. Don't you love YouTube? Alright, I've got to put the upper ball joint back in and put this thing back together. And eat some spicy apple. Boy, is that tart. All sold out of carrots. Good for you. fitting hole. Right there. Oh, they're discussing the war in Iraq. Eight years almost. A lot of troops are coming home. They need jobs. They need counseling. They need help. They need friendship. They need to be remembered. St. Vietnam. I was pretty young in Vietnam. Happened. There. All done. All done. A lot easier than beating on it with a hammer. Boy, crude and rude. So I've unthreaded the special tension nut and it's slightly askew and it took me 15 minutes to remove it with this special socket. It should have a dowel in the middle like the tamper-proof 
torque screws because it keeps sliding out of the groove. It's a real pain in the butt of runes here. I'm going to put the new one in. That's where it goes. I guess I could have left the old one in there. It's split so it can compress and it holds tension on this upper stud. You're supposed to use a torque wrench, but I'm just going to tighten it down. So I sprayed some silicone in there, clean threads. I thread this thing back in there and put my knuckle assembly back together. Then the rotor, then the tie rod. Maybe I'll do the other side. Won't that be fun?